Everything is okay, and uh, sure. you're keeping up with the force, the material, and the material is not scaring you away from electrical engineering. This will be your second force yeah. in electrical engineering after one thing. Okay, are there any questions uh, before we get started? If you really know the material, you find that electrical engineering is a lot of fun, and that material will prepare you to solve even more difficult problems in the future. Okay, so let's go back to talk about the node voltage method. What are the three main things that we do for this method? Let's revisit that. First thing is assign node voltages. The second thing, what do we do? Remember what we do after KCR. KCR. Very good, you still remember. Okay, I hope you're not the minority. Yeah, most of you still remember. KCR, pick up current law. And then solve equation. So, we need a very simple example. Um, you know you can have a a very simple example like this one over here and then you have a source and then you will have another source here and this is 2 amps this is 3 volts this is 2 ohms and this is 1 ohm and this is 4 ohm. So the first thing is look at the nodes and then assign node voltages. Okay? And uh, we can always assume that one of the nodes is grounded so that it has zero volt. So we will have V1, V2, and V3. Okay? So that's the first thing we do. But what do you notice here? The first thing that we have done. We have to introduce the number of unknowns in the problem. We have introduced three unknowns in the problem. Okay? So assign node voltages, this also assign the number of unknowns. Okay? Apply KCL to every node that we have assigned a node voltage to. So we apply KCL to over here. 
KCL to over here, KCL to over here. And what does applying KCL do? We come up with number of equations that exactly equals the number of unknowns. You notice that? Okay? So when we apply KCL, we have come up with, if we have three nodes that we work with to start with, we will end up with three equations. And what do we learn in mathematics? The number of equations has to be equal to the number of unknowns. Otherwise, the problem is not solvable. So the first two steps pose a problem that is solvable. So when you go to the third step, you're not stuck. Okay. If you come up with a method where the number of equations is less than the number of unknowns, then you cannot solve the equation. Okay, so some things that you should take note here. Okay, solvable. That is very important. And then a uh, number of you came up and asked me something about uh, coming up with the node current. It turns out that the current that we assign to flow in every branch okay, is actually dependent on the voltages that we have assigned to. Okay? In order to find that current, say if you want to find the current through this resistor, and this is V1 over here, this is V2 over here, you want to find this current, and this is R, the I, the current I, is equal to V1 minus V2 over R. That is how you find the current. That is Ohm's law. Okay, the voltage difference divided by the resistor gives you the current. So the currents are not independent on the values that depend on the V1 and V2 that you have given to the problem. We have not actually introduced new unknowns by introducing those currents because we use Ohm's law to relate them. And then some of you ask, well, how do you know that this equation is correct? Say if I have a voltage source, say 3 volts here, and then if I have a resistor, say 2 ohms here, and then I know that the voltage drop across this resistor, V should be equal to 3 volts. Okay, so if this is grounded, then this will be V1, V2. V1 is higher than V2, and we always think in terms of this form, formula being correct in the sense that V1 is larger than V2 so the current I that flows in this circuit is V1 minus V2 over 2 ohms okay? which is the higher voltage minus the lower voltage divided by the resistor and in this case it would be 3 volts over here 0 volts over here is 3 minus 0 over 2 which gets one and a half amps of current flow. But this formula can also be applied in the reverse direction. Even when, say, if we connect the terminal wrong, okay, if we connect this thing wrongly, and if this is the case, okay, then this would be minus three volts over here, and then V1 would be minus three volts, V2 will be 0, and say R is equal to 2 ohms. Okay. If I ask you to find the current I, you can still apply the formula. I is equal to V1 minus V2 over the resistor, which is 2 ohm, and in this case it will be minus 3 volt minus 0 over 2, which is minus 1.5 amps. So the minus sign takes care of the direction of the flow of the current. We apply the same formula but it comes out to be correct because the minus sign says that even though I say the current is flowing in that direction, the minus sign indicates that this current is actually flowing in that direction. So this formula is always true. Irrespective of whether V1 is larger than V2 or V1 is less than V2. If V1 is less than V2, it just compensates itself by introducing a minus sign in front and the current will go into the opposite direction. They do not have to worry about this formula. You just memorize it for the case when V1 is larger than V2. Okay, and the current is flowing in the other direction, and then it compensates itself 
and becomes automatically correct if V1 is less than V2. Okay. So some of you were wondering why when I look for the current in this direction, I use V2 minus V1 divided by 2. Okay. When you think of finding the current in that direction, it should be this voltage minus that voltage divided by 2. When you want to find the direction in this, the current in this direction, it should be V1 minus V2 divided by 2. Okay. So this current over here, because of its sign, should be V2 minus V1 over 2. This current over here should be V1 minus V2 over 2. Okay. So I can always draw an arrow and relate the current to the voltage drop in the correct manner. Okay? And then some of you were asking me, um, what do you do? Like uh, if you have KCL and you have three currents, I1, I2, and I3, all flowing into the node, then it should be this way. The sum of the total current flowing into the node is equal to zero. But if I have this situation over here, I1 is in this direction, I2 is in this direction, I3 in this direction. What is the KCL for this diagram over here? Very good. Okay, it should be that case over here because I have changed I2 to minus I2. I should have this case over here. And then, of course, you can have this case over here too. It will still be I1 or minus I1 minus I2 minus I3 is equal to zero, which is the same as the first case over there. It doesn't matter whether you put the minus sign or not. It's I1 plus I2 plus I3. Okay, you just have to make sure that the relative sign between arrows of different directions have to be negative of each other. So that's how you apply KCL. So when you apply KCL, you do it properly, you get the same number of equations as the same number of unknowns, and then solve those equations. The solving part, I hope, is the easy part. It's just a lot of algebra. You have to be skillful at it. Some of you are better than others at doing those equations. Okay, some of you will make a lot of mistakes and then come up with the wrong answer. But that means that practice makes perfect. You have to go home and practice and practice and practice. Then you can solve these equations really well. Okay? So are there anything or any questions you might have about the node voltage method? So a three very simple procedure, you're guaranteed to find a solution at the third step, okay? Let's go back to look at some more complicated example in the textbook. The textbook gives this example, and let's go through that example over here. I have the current source here. <coughs> I have a voltage source over here. One volt voltage source, two amp current source, two ohm resistor over here, and then another voltage source over here, two volt, and then another resistor over here. And let's assume that this is grounded so that it has zero volt. So let's apply the node voltage method to solving this problem. So first we assign V1 to this node, V2 to this node, and V3 to this node. Okay. These other nodes, you can assign them values, but they are redundant because you know that this node voltage will be the same as this node voltage. This node voltage will be the same as that node voltage. You can go through the exercise if you want to, but not encourage. Okay. It's by just inspection that you don't have to assign load voltages to them. And of course, this one, by the fact that it's grounded, is set to be zero potential. This node and this node and this node all are at the same potential, zero volt. Okay. So then we need to What's R in the middle of that? The R is one ohm. Okay, R is 1 ohm here. 
So, I, I guess the, the let's call this current Ix, and let's call this current over here I, and then this, this current over here. And if you apply the Hickoff current law at that node over here, this current Ix that is flowing in this direction, okay, that current Ix must be equal to this current that flows in that direction, and that current that flows in that direction is V2 minus V1. And from this picture, it's a no-brainer to figure out what V1 is. What should V1 be? Two. Okay? So it's a no-brainer over there because it is been supported by a voltage source over there. So V2 minus V1 is just V2 minus 2 divided by 2 which is a current flowing in that resistor by Ohm's law. And then the voltage drop across this is V2 over 1. Okay, That is the first equation that we should have. And then Ix should be equal to Ix this current plus this current plus this current must be equal to zero. Okay? Ix is equal to that. And then at the other node, this other node, this free current should add up to zero. So this one that goes up there is 2m. Because by the mere fact that it's <coughs> connected to that current source. Okay? So we know that So in the textbook, uh, it labels it the other way around. Okay, it labels it the other way around. And the textbook calls the current that flows in the opposite direction Ix. So I better keep with the textbook convention. Okay, so this should be minus Ix over here then. Okay, I should have that if I go with the textbook convention. That one should be minus Ix. And then Ix should be equal to this current plus that current. Ix, this current, this current is also Ix, okay, should be equal to 2 amps plus V3 <coughs> minus 0 over 2. Okay? Excuse me? Yes? Um, how did you get that V1 was equal to 2 volts so easily? Is it just because the voltage source right next to it is 2 volts or is it because of the current right. source? Right, because uh, this is an independent voltage source. You will always keep a potential difference of two volts across these two terminals, irrespective of what you do. Okay, that is the definition of a voltage source. So a voltage source is a very stubborn source that can be that is immutable, not changeable. No matter what you do, what you do that is external to it. No matter what resistors or whatever you hook to it, it always maintains a voltage drop of two volts across this terminal. Okay, by so here fact of that definition, it will maintain a voltage drop of 2 volts. So because it's grounded on the other side to 0 volts, you know it has to be 2 volts right. on the other side? Right. So it, it's not the case that V3 is 1 volt then? V3, where's V3? At the, the right other side. side of the other voltage source. Uh, no, V3 is not 1 volt because... We if do that not was connected to ground, it would be though, right? right? V2 okay. is not grounded. Okay. So V3 is 1 volt higher than V2, that's all we know. Okay? Thank you. So. And then you can actually have uh, two equations. And actually, let me see. V3 is equal to V3 minus V2 is equal to 1 volt. OK, this is another equation that we can apply across this relationship. Okay. V3 minus V2 is equal to 1 volt. So now if you look at the number of equations, 
that we have. Okay, we have actually three equations and three unknowns, the unknowns being Ix, V2, and V3. Okay? And there should be number of equations to solve for the number of unknowns. Okay? And actually this equation that we apply over here is not KCL. Okay, the last equation that we apply over here is not KCL. It's just a mere fact that these two nodes are related to each other by the voltage source that is hooked to these two nodes. Okay? So this kind of nodes is also called a super node. Or well, maybe you should include these two nodes as well. Okay. <clears throat> and in this super node, you can say that the number of the total current that leaves it, okay, this current that's leaving it, plus this current that's leaving it, plus this current that's leaving it, plus this current that is leaving it, those currents should add up to zero. Okay. This current plus this current, plus this current, plus this current, should all add up to zero. That means that if I label them, this is say I1, this is I2, this is I3, this is I4. And we should have the fact that I1 plus I2 plus I3 plus I4 should add up to zero. This is from charge conservation, because if you trace the current, okay, this current has to be equal to that current, and you can easily verify that this has to be true, okay? Because I x plus uh, I x must be equal to I one plus I two, okay? So this must be equal to I x I one plus I two must be equal to I x, and then I three plus I four must be equal to minus I x. I3 plus I4, you can trace that. I3, which is this one going down here, plus I4 must be equal to minus Ix. Okay? And then you can easily verify that this is true. So a kind of a kickoff current law is satisfied at this super node. If you let this super node connect these two nodes that are connected by a voltage source. Okay, is this clear? Yes. Okay? So at the super node, kick off current law is also satisfied. And I suppose I don't have to solve this equation to illustrate this to you. And because I don't need to solve those equations, we can do another example, a new example. So any questions so far? You might want to ask questions if you do have any. Before I move ahead, yes. Why this is going like that? This is defined. I want this current source to provide a current to flow in that direction. The symbol is pointing in that direction. If the symbol is pointing in that direction, that means there's a two m current flowing into it. In this direction, there's a two m current flowing in that direction. Okay. The current source is defined to be a source that cannot be changed in this current. No matter what you do to the outside, the 2 amp will keep flowing. Okay, the voltage force is just a converse. A 2 volt is always maintained. Any other questions? Yes? So does that mean that only 2 amps is allowed to flow through that wire, or it's adding 2 amps or whatever? Only 2 amp can flow through the wire. No matter what you do, only 2 amp can flow through the wire that connects to the current source. Okay. okay, not 3 amp, not 2.5 amps, not 2.1 amp. Okay, only 2 amp. Okay. okay, that is the characteristic of a current source. Okay, you cannot do anything to that. Okay? So let's do another example.
And this one has a current control voltage source. Okay? The current control voltage source is given by that value over here. And then I have an independent voltage source of 4 volts. I have a 3 ohm resistor over here. I have a 4 ohm resistor over here. And then I can assume that this node is connected to ground. Sometimes ground is written like this. Sometimes ground is drawn like that, depending on what kind of books you open up to. And there is a 1 ohm resistor over here. Okay, let's see how we can solve this problem. So, the first thing is to do node assignment of voltages. V1, V2. Uh, have to define where I is. What is that? Where is I is? Like, where is it dependent on? Okay, let me let me draw IX. Sorry about that. IX is this current, the current through that resistor. Okay, and then I have V3. Okay, the others are trivial. I don't have to assign them node voltages. Okay. Then I write down the relationship of IX. IX is equal to V2 minus V3 over 3. I can also see that this must be Ix, okay, by the current law. So Ix is equal to V2 minus V3 over 3. Okay, but V3 What is V3? V3 is equal to 4 volts minus this voltage drop. Okay? So it's 4 minus this voltage drop across here. Okay, is equal to uh, Ix times 3. Okay? The voltage drop across here is just Ix times 3. So 4 minus Ix times 3 is V3. Okay? So that uh, V2 minus V3 is equal to Ix times 3. Okay? If you can write this, this is V2. So this equation can also be written as V2 minus V3 is equal to Ix times 3. Okay. So it's just a simple Ohm's law. So with this in mind then, then I can say that Ix is V1 plus 4. Let me see, V1 plus 4. How did you know that V2 was 4 volts? Because it's not, V1 is not straight to the ground. No, no, sorry about that. Let me see. This is V1 plus 4. Um, so you're correct about that, okay? So V3 is equal to V1 plus 4 minus this. Okay, so it should be equal to this one. V1 plus 4 minus... So <coughs> this is actually not correct. So V2 should be equal to V1 plus 4. Okay? V2 is equal to V1 plus 4. And then if you substitute this in, this is just V2 minus V3 is Ix times 3. Okay? Thanks for pointing that out. And then uh, you can now write equation 1 in terms of V1 and Ix, okay? E1 and Ix, then I can write this equation now. That Ix equals to V2. V2 is V1 plus 4. Okay? Minus V3. V3 would be... Let me see. V3 
3 is equal to 3ix, okay? V3 is 3ix with respect to this ground because this is a voltage force, so this should be uh, minus 3ix. And then this divided by 3 will give me ix. Okay, this is the equation for ix. And then having that equation, I can see that the other equation I should have is that V1 divided by 1, okay, which is this current flowing in this direction, okay, should be V1 plus 4. Let me see. B1 divided by 1. B1 divided by 1. This should be minus Ix flowing here. Okay, so, so B1 divided by 1 should be minus Ix. Okay, and then I can solve that. Uh, Ix is equal to from this equation, okay, from this equation I have 3 ix is equal to v1 plus 4 minus 3 ix. So I have 6 ix is equal to v1 plus 4, and then ix is equal to v1 plus 4 divided by 6. Okay, so I could write this equation as being equal to minus v1 plus 4 divided by 6. And from that I can solve for my v1. Okay, this equation gives me V1, and then after you have found V1, you can find V2. After, after you find V2, uh, after V1, you can also find Vx, and then after V1 and Ix, you can find V3. So V1, V2, and V3 are all now known. Okay, you can solve this problem. Which one? For V3. V3. How come it's not just 3 times Ix? How do I get this equation? V3 is the voltage over here, right? Uh, V3 is equal to 4. Okay, I actually apply this equation on this loop over here. Okay, V3, which is the voltage at this point, must be the voltage at this point. The voltage at this point is 4 plus V1. V2 is equal to 4 plus V1. Okay, V2 must be 4 plus V1 because there's a voltage force booked over here. Okay, and then minus the voltage drop across that resistor, which is Ix times 3. Okay, so I get this equation by just applying the the kickoff voltage law on this part, the voltage drop on this loop. Okay, I get that equation over there. Yes? V3 is not Ix times 3. The voltage drop, the voltage drop on this resistor is Ix times 3. This voltage is higher than that voltage by Ix times 3. And from this other loop, okay, you can see that V3 has V3 Ix. Okay. No, it's above, right? This is positive, this is negative. It means that the voltage here is higher than the voltage here. This is zero volt. So V3 must be equal to 3Ix because right the current here is a positive number. There's a positive number resulting from here. Okay, <laughs> so if there's a positive current flowing here, there would be a positive voltage developed here. 
Now this is a number at this point. Don't think of a current flowing through that. That is just a number. This number creates a voltage difference. Okay, that number is proportional to that current flowing in that direction. A current that's flowing in that direction is a positive number. Okay, that will produce a voltage drop across this voltage control, uh, current control voltage source. And this one should be higher than this one by 3 ix, where ix is a positive number. Of course, if the current flows in the opposite direction, this will, be, will become a negative number. But when you think about this, think of ix being a positive number. Okay? V3 is above the zero because it's tied to this current control voltage source. So it's also equal to 3 IX. Okay? So are there any other questions regarding this? So let's, let's go through this one more time. Okay, let's go through this one more time. Uh, I think many of you are confused. So, Ix is equal to V2 minus V3 divided by 3. This first equation, I hope there's no confusion. Right? And then if we apply this voltage drop across here, okay, apply the voltage drop across here, V3 is the voltage at this point after this current has gone through this loop over here, plus the contribution from this voltage source. Okay. So V3 must be equal to 